Let's take a look at the AI action. Now, here we have a story that there is a webhook, and inside of the webhook, we are catching some event data associated to a messaging service where it has a message, there's a timestamp, there's an ID associated, there's a channel associated to where that came from. And in that message, we are using a trigger to see if that message contains a question mark. If it does, we create a case. Now, not every question with the question mark is something that we wanna create a case. So how's the weather, where you are, isn't really a great reason that we should be creating a case for someone from our team to follow up. So let's introduce the AI action in here to do a little problem solving. So rather than it just being this question mark that's determining if we should create a case, we're gonna grab this AI action and connect it from the webhook. And let's do a little bit of configuration. On the right hand side, I'm going to have it reference the data from that webhook. Here, I'm going to just put in that message. And where it says summarize the following data, I'm gonna change that to review this data and identify if it is either a ticket or not. If it is not a ticket, let's have it simply say not a ticket. And if it is a ticket, let's have it say new request. And essentially in the prompt, we're giving guidance or instructions to the AI, and then we're providing it whatever data that we want to give it. It's worth noting that we can reference multiple data points just by doing the plus and the value within the prompt. So now that we've given it a data source and some instructions, I'm just going to re-emit the last event from the webhook and just see what the AI action has to say. When I pull up the event data, the output just shows as new request. It's worth noting that whenever the AI action executes, it's always going to have this output there as a key. Now let's connect the AI action into the trigger and let's change it to the AI action for the output and make it so that if it says new request, then we should create the ticket. Just to make sure that this is working as intended, I'm going to go into my webhook in my events and I'm just going to find one that it shouldn't create a ticket. Okay, so how's the weather where you are? So I'm, I'm going to re-emit from there, and you'll notice that in the AI action under events, it says not a ticket, which is great. So it's looking at the data and thinking about it. It's not going to create that ticket because it gets stopped at the trigger. Let's look at another example that we might be able to use outside of triaging information. Here we have this event that includes a bunch of data. So here it's an alert type with a risk score. There's alert description and there's also information. So here we have a security alert. Uh, typically you might review this and see if it hits a certain set of criteria to determine if there should be certain actions taken. But let's just add the AI action, connect it from that risk example, and let's put in here Review this data from the perspective of a cybersecurity specialist and advise if it is a risk factor of 0 to 10. Provide recommended steps as well. And here I'm just going to map it in to be a risk example.data.output. And I'm going to go ahead and re-emit last event and see what the AI action has to say. We'll click right into that event data and it looks like from a cybersecurity perspective, the provided data represents a significant risk factor, which I would rate eight out of 10. The alert indicates multiple failed login attempts. So it's actually going through and it's telling you kind of what's going on. And then it's also providing recommended steps as well. So it's looking at the data and it's trying to think of it from that security perspective, because at the beginning, we actually assigned it a role. So rather than just asking it a question where we say, hey, you're a cybersecurity specialist, or think of this from a perspective of someone who works in cybersecurity. So adding a little bit of context at the beginning of your prompt kind of sets the stage or sets the expectations of how AI should be interpreting the data that you're feeding it. All right, so there are other ways to get started if you're fairly new to using AI. Here, if you just click on the AI templates, we can grab this Tynes AI action. And then there are a couple of ones that are already pre-configured. Here's this one for analyze alert, where it's kind of similar to what I was writing, but it has a lot more context where it's like, hey, respond with JSON fields. So I'm just gonna click on that. 
connect it from my risk example and then just update that data point. We'll again see that role kind of assigned at the beginning where it says act as an expert cybersecurity engineer analyzing the following alert. In here, we'll see it says respond with JSON and there is recommendations, risk rating, and risk explanation. So when we get the results, it will show us in JSON format with those keys. You'll also notice that it says only use data from the event. Do not generate any example data or make any assumptions. So we're just giving the AI further guidance and by using words like only and if you kind of give it more what I would consider strict guidance. So since we ask it to respond with JSON and we kind of give it some recommendations, hopefully it will implement that. So when I go to re-emit the event and pull it up, here I'll see in the output, it's not just string of text, there's risk explanation as a key with information, there's a risk rating as a key, and there's also recommendations. When I open up the recommendations, uh, they're kind of neat and tidy. Since these are all JSON objects, we can reference them downstream on other actions. So if we were creating a case, we can put in the recommendations, we can use the risk ratings for triggers and things of that nature. The more context that we're able to provide to our prompt, it gets us to a more clean result. So adding in that type of role, adding in things like only provide JSON or don't generate any example data, all of that can kind of help guide and sculpt how the AI reviews your request and then gives you the desired output. On the bottom for options, we have additional models. So you can kind of pick and choose between the different ones, depending on what kind of results are being generated per model. Each model interprets the data just a little bit differently. But the most important thing is always to have a very refined prompt for whatever results you're trying to achieve. Excited on how you implement this in your workflows and happy building.